Hello guys, I'm going to show you a few tricks and tips today with the carnivorous plants. Uh, first off, I'll be showing you how I go about feeding some of the indoor tropicals since they don't have constant access to bugs outside. And oh, it's really bright. Yeah, so I'll be showing you what I go about doing to feed them, what equipment I use, what foods I use, and how I get it into some of these smaller pitchers. And onto the pygmy sundews, because I've had a lot of questions on how I go about feeding those. Not as simple or difficult as it sounds, it may sound complex, but it's actually pretty rudimentary, so start off with the supplies and foods. Okay, so first off, let's focus. Okay, so first off, we're going to go through the basic supplies. We're only really going to need two things here, which are feeding tongs. I like to use the ones that you typically use for tarantulas or reptiles. Just so happens I also have tarantulas. So, win-win situation there, and a toothpick. This is for the pygmy sundews and smaller nepenthes, such as my Edwardsiana seedling, since I can't really fit that inside of the opening of the pitcher without tearing it. And with something that slow growing and sunning, not something you want to do. Okay, so those are the tools that I use. Now we're going to go through the foods. New Life Spectrum. This is what I swear by for Nepenthes. Let's see if it's it in focus. There we go. That'll give you an idea of what the can looks like. It's just the basic general formula. Uh, pretty high nitrogen content. So I am allergic to fish, so I can't really handle this. That's why I use the feeding tongs. Otherwise, I break out in hives on my hands. And for the smaller ones, I use New Life Thera, or, yeah, Thera plus a small fish formula. This one's more easily sized to seedling Nepenthes and smaller Heliamphora. Doesn't fungus as quickly, especially if they have a low amount of fluids in the pitchers. So, yeah, New Life Spectrum, way to go with Nepenthes. And as far as some do, I use Hikari's freeze-dried Daphnia. This one's fairly hard to find on the shelf, so you may have to order this one online. I don't remember the shop that I found this in. It might have been down in Virginia Beach, one of the numerous shops there. But this is a lightweight food, does not fungus, even in high humidity terrariums, easily absorbed within a matter of hours or days. And this is what I use the toothpick to apply. Basically just wet it with my tongue and smear it on the leaves. Okay, so now that I've showed you that, I'm going to show you the actual techniques that I use for this. Okay, so before we go on to that, I forgot something f somewhat important. For seedling Saracenia, a lot of you have heard me talk about spray fertilization. What I use is basically just a small spray bottle. You want it to have a slight hip to it, or round off. That's what I fill up the fertilizer water with, with the orchid fertilizer. The rest, rainwater or distilled water. Gets a quarter dilute solution, or slightly more, but not enough to cause salt buildups. So, this is basically just what I use, put it on the mist setting, and spray it over the leaves. And I'll show you that after we go through the Nepenthes. Okay. So, let me get that more in frame. There we go. So there's the Nepenthes Vici. Basically what I do is I just take the tongs, there's a little pellet of New Life Spectrum in there. Just open it up and scrape it against the edge of the peristome. It should drop in, which it did. In case you didn't see that, I'm going to show you with the Maxima. They only need one pellet a week, really. Sorry for the dirty glass, uh, Gecko was living in there for 14 years prior to these guys, so it's a little dirty. What can you do? And I did scrub that down with vinegar quite vigorously, so it should be fairly clean. Okay, so there's the maximum. This should give you a better idea since it's a flatter focal plane. Okay, so here we go. Tongs, New Life Spectrum, you simply drop it in like that. Easy enough. Same thing can apply for Heliamphora. Just take a smaller pellet, drop it straight into the center of it, it'll land in the digestive juices and dissolve. And let's see what else is there in here that I need to go about fertilization or feeding. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for Nepenthes feeding. Really simple, uh, not as difficult as it sounds. 
So we'll go over to Drosera, which is what I have the most questions about. Okay, so we'll take care of Drosera in a bit. For now, don't, I forgot about this guy, but we'll do the Cephalotus. Pretty much the same principle as applies to Nepenthes, but the Parasome's a little harder to scrape it off with, so instead we're going to use the lid. So that does not secrete nectar, it's not sticky. So just take the tongs, New Life Spectrum, whatever side it sticks onto, and I missed. It's kind of hard doing this with the camera in the way. So here we go again. Tongs, New Life Spectrum. Scrape it on the inside. It goes right in the pitcher. Once a week, do that, and you should be fine. Okay, and as far as Drosera are concerned, I'll show you back this up a little bit. Probably not the best one to demonstrate with. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay, so there's the Madagascariensis. I'm not allergic to shellfish as I am fish, so I just dump this out onto my hands. Get a pinch of it like that. So you just about a fingerful, and you just sprinkle it onto the leaves for these larger ones. That usually does the trick. Gets it a nice, even distribution of feeding, so you don't concentrate all of it in one spot. And get some down to the spatulata at the bottom. Now for the smaller ones like seedlings and the pygmies, is where we're going to get the toothpick in play. Okay, so we're going to use Drosorosid and Talus for this video demonstration. So what I do is I just wet the tip of the toothpick with my tongue, dip it in the Daphnia, uh, you don't want to breathe on it because uh, it will go everywhere since it's so lightweight. And you just simply make contact with the leaves. It'll stick on like that. Since these do have a really strong mucilage. Now the pygmies don't need that large of a food size. So you use the smallest one possible. Did that go on? No. And this is the tricky thing. So, actually finding the leaves on this guy, because it's so small. Yeah, we just stick it on like that. And in a matter of minutes to hours, it'll wrap the tentacles around it and digest it. So, this is why I prefer to use Daphnia. It's simple, easy, quick, clean. As compared with some other foods where it funguses, because it stays on for too long. Yeah, so that's all that it is to feeding sundews right there. Then the uh, Sarsenia just missed the leaves and you're good. So do all this about once a week and you should see some pretty impressive results. I yeah, hope that was useful to you guys and that's all I have for today. So until next time, see you later.